Hey there everyone, Erica here from High 49 rc Last time in the MOA build, we got the chassis all put together with all the cross members put in, fabricated, and this thing is looking absolutely sweet. Today what we need to do is make a center skid plate because there's nothing going on here and that's a problem. I have a design that I made. I think I showed it in the last episode or maybe in the first episode, I forget now, but we're going to take a look at that on the computer. We're also going to take a look at what my order of operations is going to be for milling out this skid plate. This is going to be a much more in-depth and detailed machining video than I usually do. Usually I just do time lapses, but today I kind of want to try something different. I got to be honest, I'm pretty nervous to start this skid plate. Um, I really hope that everything turns out okay. The material that we're going to be using for the skid plate actually came from a viewer. One of you guys sent in um, some material along with some tooling, so huge thanks to you. I've been using your tooling, I've been using the material. With that, let's head over to the computer and take a look at the design. So here we are inside Fusion 360. This was my original skid plate design, as I mentioned in the first episode. and. I think I mentioned that I didn't really like the way that this front portion stuck out. Um, it was going to hang up on rocks and such down here. And I made some adjustments and changes and this ended up being my final skid plate design. I turned off all of the other components to the chassis so you can just compare the two. My original and the updated, which is the one that I'm going to be machining today. To give you guys a better understanding of the order of operations that I'm going to need to take to machine this skid plate out, I took and modeled each step in the process so you guys get a really, really solid understanding of what we're going to be doing. So for starters, we've got our stocks here already down to our final dimension. I don't need to show you the rough stock in here, that's kind of pointless. Our first step is going to be machining out these link slots for the lower links. I'm going to do that with a 3 16 end mill, and that's going to be done in the vise. Our second step is going to be to mill out these little corner notch out angle bits along with the holes. The milling and drilling in this operation is going to be completed in the vise at the same time for each corner. So I'll do one corner, move to the next, to the next, to the next, and as such. Once that's done, we're going to actually take and bolt the whole part down to the table and get it fixtured up and we're going to use a half inch end mill to clean out this larger area here. And while it's still on the table, we are going to chamfer these edges just to make it look nice. When that's done, um, we're going to bring it back to the vise and get these angles milled in. Those are just to kind of help rocks and such slide um, and not get hung up. And finally, the three mounting holes on each side for the chassis will be drilled as well. Hopefully that gives you a good idea of what the order of operations is going to be that I'm going to take. And honestly, it's pretty cool to be able to see from plain stock to finished product gives you guys a really good understanding of just what we're going to be doing and how we're going to be doing it. With that, let's head out in the garage and get started. All right, morning guys, and it is morning. It is in fact two in the morning, but that's when we're doing this, so whatever. Before we actually get to milling anything, I need to tram in the vise because we've been pushing it around a little bit just to get it out of the way. But hang on, what does tramming the vise mean? Let me explain. What it means is to make sure that the fixed jaw of the vise is parallel with the movement of the table. Because, I've, so I've, I've set up a very extreme example here. So if I was to clamp a piece of work in here and try to machine it straight this way or this way, you're gonna end up with a parallelogram. Albeit it will be a square angle but it's not going to be square to the fixed jaw of the vise, which is a reference surface for the rest of your part. So what we need to do is use a very precise dial indicator, which I have here, and align the vise so that it is perfectly straight. I usually try and get it within a thousandth of an inch across this, I think this is six inches, and that is usually a very, very good tolerance. Check out how little the needle moves across the entire vise. It is pretty much negligible. Moves a little bit both directions from zero 
And to be honest with you, that is awesome. So that is within 0 0.0005 of an inch. That's half a thousandth of an inch or five ten thousandths of an inch. I would say, to be honest with you, if one line is five ten thousandths, I would say it's probably within three, which is really, really good. With that taken care of, head over to the bench, take a look at our cutters and stock. So I've got three stock blanks cut out roughly oversized so I can bring them right down into dimension. And hopefully I only need one, but you know me, I'm probably gonna need at least one of the other ones. I've got a half inch carbide end mill. This is what I'm gonna use for roughing because the corners on it are a little chipped. Um, so not good for making a nice sharp inside corner. Got a 3 16 end mill here. This is gonna be for my link slots. I also use this one for cutting out my chassis because it's small and it's got a nice thick shank, real short, makes it real rigid. This guy is a half inch end mill with a uh, 30 thousandths corner radius on it, as I recall. And this is going to be for these areas. This is my test block. I made sure to get my programs all ready to go and any issues ironed out. And this guy is my chamfer bit, of course, to do the chamfers on these little areas there. I know I said we're not doing much time lapsing in this video, but I'm going to time lapse getting the stock roughed in because it's kind of a boring, laborious task and I just want to get it done. Direction should be inch and three quarters. We're about two thou under. A little more than two thou under, about four thou under, so that's plus or minus two thousandths across the whole dimension, which is perfectly good. Um, let's see, lengthwise here, we're looking at pretty much dead on what I set the machine to, which is perfect. So that was. And I see it's like plus or minus 2,000 again, that's 3.806. And thickness wise, we are looking at about 2,000 under, 3,000 under, 5,000 under, 2,000 under. So we're looking really good in terms of our dimensions. Um, you know, a few thousands, that's a, the thickness of a sheet of paper, realistically speaking. So a, a piece of paper is like seven thousandths of an inch or something like that. So we're really splitting hairs. This is perfectly good enough for what we need to do with it. Fun little story about these calipers while I'm here. These are a set of calipers that my grandfather, my mom's dad, gave to my dad to give to me when I was old enough. He was a tool and die machinist in the aerospace industry um, back, I'm not sure when, uh, probably 70s, 80s, 90s, somewhere in there, I'm not quite sure. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty special tool that I'm definitely going to keep with me for a long time and take very good care of. I've got our part clamped up in the vise on the tall parallels and the edge finder in the chuck because we need to start setting up for our first CNC program. So what we're gonna need to do, once my camera focuses, is I need to go to MDI, which is manual like data input, over to MISC, and then I gotta put in M03, shift, space, S600. So what that is, M03 is spindle 
on clockwise and S600 is just speed so RPM is going to be 600 RPMs because we don't want the edge finder going at 3000 RPMs because it goes across the shop don't ask me how I know but now we're going to go ahead and store that it wants us to start it and I'm just going to stop it immediately because I don't need it on for the moment okay so as you can see this little guy is not centered up and aligned and it can move around right so what we're gonna do is I want to bring it up here next to the edge of my part so I'm gonna be setting the Y0 right now let's go ahead and start her up and as I bring the part closer and closer it's gonna stop off from here so let me knock it off as I bring it in closer, it gets closer and closer and closer. And as soon as it breaks free, right there, I can stop it and I can zero that right there. However, this is not zero. I'm a quarter inch, because this is a half inch diameter, I'm a quarter inch away from my edge. And my CNC program's zero is on that corner exactly. So what that means is I need to move the head up a little bit, like so, and move the y-axis a quarter inch. Right there. And zero again. I know I could literally just do like plus a quarter inch but I get confused which way is plus and minus I should probably learn that but you know what whatever and now we're going to do the exact same thing over here with the x-axis so that right there if I bring it into zero zero the center of this half inch bit which is going to be an end mill here in a second is directly over that corner which is exactly what we want because that is the origin of our CNC program. The final step in the equation is to bring the head back down with our end mill in it. I'm just going to use the quill and bring it down until it touches off, like so. Lock it down, and that is now zero as well. So at this point, I can go ahead and get my CNC program active on the machine and we can mill this out. To get our program active, I'm gonna head over to run, uh, menu, and these are a bunch of files that are stored in the computer right now. So I'm looking at this one, that link gaps 316, 2201. That is our first program that we're going to run. And I'm going to hit verify just to make sure that that is the program we want. And it is. That's the shape that we're going for. We can exit out of that now and hit enter. And so now up in the top corner here, it says active 2201. And that is the program that we're going to run right now. I'm not going to show you that process for the next CNC programs because you guys have seen it once. You guys have seen all of them basically zero it out, get it active, away we go. All right, I went and grabbed my other lens so that my camera is well out of the splash zone because I'm gonna be running coolant for this program. I'm ready to go, let's get it started.
I could not have asked for better results. Of course, you guys can't see it, but these edges actually got machined too. That little bit of extra length we had on here did exactly what I wanted it to. It meant that it cleaned up this edge for me and has the same surface finish as in the link gaps. But man, it's looking great so far. The next step I have to do is kind of weird and I've got to do it four times. So I'm gonna do it the first three times by myself to get the order of operations and process figured out. And then I'll come back and show you guys and explain what exactly I'm doing. gauge which is really nice I need to get this angle to be 19 degrees I already have my y-axis zeroed out to this face I need to zero in on that edge right there there we go bring the head down here and then I need to move my x-axis see that way from zero minus 0 0.054 I'm going to touch off the corner of my end mill now, I recognize that this is not a very precise way to get a good zero for what I'm doing here, but you know what? This has been working for me. Now, if I want to go minus 0 0.072 on the z-axis, and away we go. There we go, just like that. Our little notch out is cut there. In goes my drill, which is the correct size for tapping a three millimeter hole. Now I want to bring the Y to 0.125 because that's half of a quarter inch. And my X needs to be at 0 0.2. The depth of hole needs to be 0.554 about. So I'm just going to bring the quill down. I have a DRO on the quill. Four of these little notches cut out in the corners with the holes ready to be tapped in them. Next up, we need to get this fixtured to the table so we can mill out the large sections here in the center and get them chamfered. So here's what's going on. I've got my skid plate clamped down to the table. Admittedly a little sketchily. Hopefully it works. But because I'm clamping it to the table, it's all willy-nilly. There's no reference. So it could be out of square, which means I need to pull out my dial indicator again and make sure that this direction is perfectly in line with the table travel. Because otherwise, we're gonna get lines in here that are not perpendicular to the edges. I am one thousandth of an inch out, so that's two lines on the dial. I am perfectly happy with that. We should be good to go on our X and Y zeros. I have checked my tool paths to make sure that they're not going to interfere with my fixturing. 
I guess all's left now is to put the right tool in and press go. I am very nervous. <laughs> a close clamping job I'm really worried about it hitting what I think I'm gonna do is loosen these or one at a time very carefully slide them back just a tiny bit because the chamfer bit is not gonna be putting a lot of force on the skid plate so hopefully you should be able to get enough clearance and enough clamping surface area that will be okay. I got my clamps moved. I'm just going to zero this thing off real fast and then uh, we are going to be ready to go here. So we got our chamfers more or less as planned. No collisions, which is fantastic. So you can see that one there looks good. These, I have a bit of a qualm about these guys. You see how they come to a bit more of a point at the top? I was originally hoping that the chamfers would be roughly equal width as this top bit. Now, I'm not sure why that is. Um, I'm not sure why it milled like it did. Um, it could very well be that right here it was pushed up a little bit because this is so thin. Um, that's definitely a possibility. Um, yeah, honestly I'm not entirely sure. But I think it should be good enough for me because there needs to be a screw that goes into that space. And it looks like that should be enough enough clearance hopefully to drill and tap a hole. My last milling operation, I need to get this guy clamped in at 30 degrees. All right, there we go. This is so cool. Check that out, guys. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Again, this little thing in the middle is a little weird, but I'll live with it. All that's left now is to drill the holes on the sides to mount it to the chassis. I'd say that looks about right. I'm just going to go ahead, drill them all. I'll come back and show you when I'm done because it's just drilling holes. You guys get the idea. There you go, guys. It is done. I can't believe I did this. I was actually really nervous about making this video and working on this project, but I've gone and done it. I'm a little concerned about how 
close those edges are to that hole. I think as long as I go really slow and be really careful and put a lot of um, cutting oil on it, I think we should be okay. Well, for now, for me, I am pleased with this. I am very tired. I don't have a freaking clue what time it is, but I've been up since two working on this and I'm quite tired. For you guys, next up, we need to go inside and get all these holes tapped. And from there, we can go ahead and bolt it to the chassis, which is going to be super, super exciting. I'm really proud of this, actually. Um, it turned out really good. I'm, and like I mentioned, I was nervous to make this video and work on this project, or at least work on this part of the MOA. I don't know. Somehow, I made it happen. Maybe. It was the flowers in the background? I don't know. Anyway. Inside we go. Are threaded. Um, obviously I'm going to be getting some shorter set screws to hold the links in and the rod ends fit in there just absolutely gorgeously. The two downsides about this so far, okay three, we've got some marring here on the corner from our clamping because I had to clamp it down really hard. Our chamfers here in the middle just while the holes didn't break out, which is very good, um, it's a little too much for my liking. And finally, unfortunately, I kind of miscalculated slash overjudged how much clearance I would need to get these holes tapped. So those are the threads that you can see there. <sighs> kind of a bummer. Hopefully it's not going to be an issue because um, most of the load's going to be on this tab anyways. And also it doesn't need to be tight because there's going to be a chassis plate here that's going to keep those set screws in there. So it's not like they're going to come out, so a little bit of thread lock should be fine. I'm expecting to have issues with this skid plate though, overall. I'm not quite sure what, I can't really predict, although my guess would be that these guys would rip out the two link screws there. Along with this one over here, got it as well. This one didn't. Thankfully, which is cool. And then the other issue I think I might end up having with it is the thickness of the bottom here. I'm worried that that might be too thin and that it's just gonna get bashed and bent on rocks. episode. I'm absolutely going to make an extended cut version of this episode because I filmed so much footage, almost probably more than I have for almost any other video. 
I've got four SD cards full of footage, so I want to do an extended cut. And then, of course, this version, which is going to be just, you know, the normal one. But I guess this will be at the end of the extended cut, too. Whatever, it doesn't matter. This thing turned out really, really good. I'm overall happy with it. A few little issues, but honestly, like, if we're looking at research and development type stuff here, it's not going to be perfect the first time. You're always going to learn something, and you're always going to learn something new for next time. And I definitely did. But, for now, this looks absolutely phenomenal. I'm staring at it in the viewfinder. Yes, I know, I'm sorry. It just looks so good. So, with that, you guys, thank you so much for watching this episode. If you did enjoy, please leave a big fat thumbs up. If this does happen to be the first video that you have seen by me, make sure you consider hitting that subscribe button down below. Make sure you hit the bell also to get notified of when the next episode of the MOA build comes out. Follow me on Instagram, support me on Patreon, join my Discord server, and become a member if you can. All the links to my social media and all those things are down in the description down below. And leave a comment if you are excited for the next episode and what you think of this chassis overall. So, that's all I got to say, you guys. Thank you again so much for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next one.